Meet the Budget Beast. Our build features an NVIDIA GTX 1080 and a 12 core Intel CPU and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Would you like this PC? Of course you would. One lucky subscriber is going to win it in our giveaway. Yay! So stay tuned for the information about how to enter the giveaway. <laughs> no way, you must be just pulling together secondhand parts out of the trash and sticking them together for that price like some sort of Dr. Hobo Frankenstein. No, 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 most of the components are actually new. And on top of that, all of the components are linked in the description, even the used ones, so you can follow this build at home exactly. This doesn't rely on garage sales or one-time strange oddball purchases off of the Facebook marketplace. No, you can replicate this exact build right now. And this budget beast is a pretty damn good PC to begin with as it is, but it's also got a great upgrade path that means hopefully you'll be able to get years worth of functionality out of this rig. What's the catch? Well, two things actually. One is that this build really cost me $300, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to get it down to 250 without sacrificing performance. And catch number two? Well, I mean, this budget beast isn't exactly the sexiest PC. Can we just call it Jenkinstein? No, it's the budget beast. But it's clearly a janky Frankenstein, hence Jenkinstein. I mean, what is that case? Actually, it's an ATX test bench. It's less expensive than a case, and this is, after all, the budget beast. But don't worry, I will share some budget-friendly PC case options with you later on for those of you who don't relish the idea of your small child or pet being electrocuted by exposed computer components. Zzz. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. It could damage your PC. Not to mention harm your children. So what? They had it coming. What we really care about is that you don't want to damage the Jenkinstein. Budget beast. So seriously, come on, man. If your budget is only 250 or 300, just get a console already, okay? You big, dumb, stupid, not smart, idiot face. Offensive and a little bit redundant, if I'm being honest. Yes, for that budget, a console might get you more gaming performance, and you won't have to build it yourself, but this PC is for Unreal Engine, something you can't use with a console. Not to mention all the other things that you can do with a PC that you can't do on a console. Don't I know it? There's some things I like to do with a PC regularly. <laughs> If you catch my drift. Why did you have to make it dirty like that? You want it clean? Then check out this clean ass bomber jacket on northcourt1999.com. <laughs> you can get a 15% off discount when you become a Patreon member. Patreon.com forward slash Bodie the Movie Maker. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the plug, man. I appreciate it. Somebody's got to do something to finance this harebrained idea. I mean, giving away a PC? Come on, you've got less than 2,000 subscribers. What are you thinking, man? Okay, get to it already. Give us a tour of the PC components. Okay, here is the actual cost of the parts without tax. For a new Intel 2011-3 socket PC cooler, 25 bucks. Let's just pretend I did not buy the wrong cooler at first for $19. <laughs> oh no, the CPU cooler won't fit. Oh no. Fun fact I found out about this CPU. You can just set a cooler on it without actually connecting it. Make sure there's a little bit of thermal paste and you'll probably be fine. No need to mount it. So if you already have a non 2011-3 CPU cooler sitting around, it's worth a try. Just make sure to check your CPU temps while it's running. You know, be careful is all I'm saying. The new test bench, $23. A three pack of extra fans, $9. The new PSU, $50. The new solid state drive, $33. The used 
motherboard CPU RAM combo, $68. And finally, the used GPU, $95. The total comes out to $303. In a bit, again, I will tell you how to make a comparable build for about $250, but first, let me introduce you to all the components. The thing that really enables this build is the used CPU, mini ATX motherboard, and RAM combo from AliExpress. The Kiida X99 mini ATX motherboard and the 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM that all comes together with an Intel Xeon E5 2650 V4 12 core 2.2 GHz processor. Now the CPU is the only thing that doesn't technically meet the Unreal Engine base requirements. Now keep in mind, this motherboard and CPU combo is comes with a kind of obscure socket, the LGA 2011 dash three, which makes it a bit harder to find a CPU cooler. So I simply just removed the hardware from my incorrect cooler uh, and just set it on here with a little bit of thermal paste. Okay, okay, okay. But will it run Unreal Engine? Let's find out, shall we? With the set to maximum starter content and ray tracing, why not? So we have hit 40 Celsius. That's the highest we've hit so far. Preparing shaders. So 1080, 60 Hertz. Ah, boo, 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 boo. Ah, boo, boo, boo. Ah, 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 ah. I also did some testing in Unreal Engine at 4K with this zombie project that I'm using from my Northport 1999 short film in 4K, so. This thing works for Unreal Engine. In my Unreal testing, the CPU never got over 40 degrees Celsius. Pretty good. Now on to the cooler. I originally got the wrong one for like 19 bucks because it was a very good deal. But since we are giving this PC away, we're going to be pairing it with a compatible air cooler with a RGB fan, although the motherboard does not have any RGB headers. Sad face emoji. Which reminds me of an important point. This motherboard came with zero documentation. No manual, nothing. But if I could assemble this thing as my second PC build ever, then you should be fine. A few things to note about the Kiida X99 motherboard. One, I highly doubt that this motherboard has a TPM secure boot module, which as far as I can tell is definitely required for installing Windows 11 operating system. If it has a TPM secure boot module, I was not able to figure out how to turn it on in the strange BIOS that I was not familiar with. Again, no motherboard manual to consult. I'm sure it would be in Chinese anyways, even if I was able to find it. So, you know, there's that. But I really don't think TPM is an option here. So I just went with installing Windows 10 and it worked out just fine, easy peasy. Number two, the CPU cooler situation is going to affect the amount of space you have to install RAM and the M.2 NVMe SSD. So make sure that your cooler dimensions work and that you orient the cooler properly in case you decide to upgrade to four RAM DIMMs. It only comes with two RAM sticks, 16 gigabytes. On the website it says that the motherboard's capacity is 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that might not even be an issue anyways. But as I have it installed with the RAM DIMMs in the yellow RAM slots, DIMM 1 and DIMM 3 uh, it works and the CPU cooler fits. But the M.2 NVMe is probably going to be an issue with the provided cooler or mounting bracket. Three, there's no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but there's plenty of back and front IO ports for using a Wi-Fi dongle. Four, there's only two fan headers on this motherboard, so you might want to get yourself some fan splitters. You can buy a set of these for less than 10 bucks. Now moving on to the drive. At least tell me you used an M.2 drive. Nope, I used a $33 Team Group 512 gigabyte 2.5 inch SSD, which surprisingly comes with a three year warranty. They seem to be a reputable choice among 
the budget build community. But you could have gotten a team group M.2 NVMe drive for $33 and it would have been way faster. Yeah, but the motherboard doesn't come with a heatsink for the M.2 SSD, so I would have had to buy one separately and add on a whole nother $7, which would have put us over budget, man. You don't need a heatsink. PCIe 4.0 NVMe drives are generally going to need a heatsink of some sort, or they'll throttle under load, which kind of negates having a faster drive, don't you think? It's going to vary individually depending on the different models. Uh, some are less performance oriented, being able to tolerate not having a heatsink much better, but overheating worsens the M.2 NVMe SSD's performance and causes damage to its data retention and endurance, man. Also keep in mind that this particular motherboard where they've placed the M.2 SSD makes it nearly impossible that it's gonna fit with a heat sink if you're using the provided 2211-3 uh, socket cooler mounting bracket. So 2.5 inch SSD for the win. Plus keep in mind, this is the budget beast. If we start slipping one place and you know a few dollars here, a few dollars there, pretty soon, it's not the budget beast no more. Now, if you really want to try adding an M.2 NVMe SSD, let's say you already have one laying around in a compatible heat sink, then you could get an M.2 NVMe extender cable for roughly $21 and mount your drive in a much more convenient place. Okay, for the PSU, we got the Zalman Gigamax 500 watt 80 plus bronze, which comes with a five year warranty. Not bad. It's non-modular, hence the need for extra beefy cable management, as you can see here. I think I did an okay job. It comes with two PCIe Express 6 plus 2 power connectors, so you can eventually upgrade the GPU. This one only requires one of those cables. As you start venturing into more power hungry GPUs, keep in mind they often recommend higher wattage PSUs anyways, but something to keep in mind. It also comes with six SATA power connectors. The motherboard has three SATA connectors, so if you want to load it all the way up, I suggest filling your PCIe by one slot with a SATA expansion card you can find them on eBay for under $50. Alternatively, you could use that slot for a Wi-Fi card, a networking card, or a USB expansion card. The case, AKA the not a case, really. As I mentioned, it's actually a test bench. It comes with all the mounting screws you would need for the motherboard, fans, SSDs, and it even has a cute little power button. No. Oh. You hear that? It's just adorable. What else do you really need? <laughs> you wanna see how I prevent dust from getting into the components? Wow. Yes, you could buy a decent case with fans for 60 bucks, but this test bench plus three fans purchased separately cost me $32. The only case I could find for $32 is a plastic mini ATX case with no fans for $32 or $33. It's black, it's green, it's pink, you get to choose. Is it plastic or is it steel? It says it has both. <laughs> I don't know, I'm guessing it's plastic. Making a budget beast requires having an open mind, an open case, if you will. Make your mind an open PC case. Expand your horizons. Now, the whole reason we have saved money on every component that we can is so that we can prioritize the GPU. I don't know what that was. Wasn't particularly happy about it when it happened. The GPU. Yes, little boys and girls. A used NVIDIA Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1080 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. I got it off of eBay for $95 and so can you. You can get this exact same thing. It was, uh, there were a bunch of them used in a server and the guy has a handful in stock. So check out the link for $95.
So they've been opened up and so they kept the original passive heat sinks and then they zip tied some server fans on the end of the unit and attached it to the fan power, which works just fine. It says in the listing that it runs constantly at 100% RPM all the time with no fan control. They say that the fan loudness is around 65 to 72 decibels, which is normal conversation level. In my experience, it's not actually running at 100% all the time. It's quieter. Right after installing Windows 10, the first time it booted up, it went through some process and that fan kicked up. To and she's on, mashing the delete keys. It's alive. <laughs> Yes! Yeah! It went through some process and that fan kicked up to full speed and it was like at least four times louder than it normally is. And man was it pumping. It was kind of too loud to be standing this close to it. So keep that in mind. But it's pretty easy to cut the cable ties and put your own fan on here. You've got fan power and if you buy a splitter you could put two of these extra case fans on it if you want. You could probably just get away with one. The original version of this only had one fan and a heat shroud over it. And I bought three extra case fans and I only used one, so you've got two more for the GPU for that eight bucks. Well, what about the Cinebench score, man? Hey, you read my mind. We got the Budget Beast running here. Here's Cinebench R23. The multi-core score was 9,133. There you go, that's it. What do we expect for a $10 CPU? but uh, it certainly didn't overheat. Okay, 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 okay. But will it game? Let's see, shall we? I'm getting nine frames per second. A few moments later. 1,000 frames per second. Okay, so with ray tracing off, <laughs> this is looking much more, okay. So with ray tracing turned off, we are happy. Okay, totally playable. Die, die, die. Uh, okay, so with OpenGL settings in the renderer and uh, 1920 by 1080 at 100 frames per second, it says we're getting 1,000 frames per second. So 4K at 60. Let's see how this goes. Okay, it says we're getting 600 frames per second, so I think it was just trying to turn on ray tracing. Yeah, okay, this is so playable. Get off me, dude. This looks freaking sweet for like retro game. Love this. Okay, let's play CSGO. Ah, that might be it. Need to get the latest driver. Okay, that's fine. Let's just, let's just play. So, we'll, we'll figure out how to tweak the settings. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> Damn it. Get out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're doing really good. Okay, so that got us up to over the 40s, 43. Fahrenheit on our CPU. Pretty much every core, 40 or over. I need a haircut. Can you tell? All right, but you promised us that you're gonna show a comparable build that actually hits the $250 mark. All right, you're right. So here's how you can shave off 50 bucks. First thing, you could, instead of the NVIDIA GPU, you could get an AMD RX 580 with the same eight gigabytes of VRAM for 60 bucks on AliExpress, which I have not personally tested yet, but it does seem to perform very well for the price for gaming in the videos that I've seen from the budget community. That brings the bill down to roughly $268. Now, I technically only used one of the three case fans that I bought. So how inexpensive could we get one fan? I've seen $3 or less. So now we're down to 265. I could have gotten a 256 gigabyte team group SSD for $24, 
now we're down to 256. Any lower than that, I would have to rely on finding products on Facebook Marketplace or at a garage sale and you wouldn't be able to replicate it at home. My takeaways. Compared to my first build, this was actually really fun to put together and much, much, much easier. No BIOS flashing, no installing driver. Not that I would know how to find drivers for this random Chinese motherboard if I needed to. And at this price point, it is a fantastic way to dip one's toe into building a PC for the first time. However, no motherboard manual makes it a little bit less accessible, but all you have to do is watch a PC building guide like the one on Linus Tech Tips, follow the setup instructions, and for this, you're gonna have a good time, even if it's your first PC. The CPU comes pre-installed, all you have to do is put the two provided RAM DIMMs into the two yellow RAM slots, plug in the motherboard power supply, plug in the SSD to the SATA port, plug in the SSD power supply, slot in the GPU, screw it in place, put in the one power, uh, the one eight pin connector for the GPU power supply, install a case fan, plug in your fan headers, you got two of them, Plug in your little power switch and you're ready to go. Put in your thumb drive with your Windows 10 install media. It really is just that simple. It's like building Legos for lonely adults who don't know how to socialize in real life. Plus the parts are not very expensive to replace. I mean, 10 bucks to get a new used CPU if for some reason you damage it during the process. So. It's kind of like learning to drive on a rental car. The stakes are just lower. All in all, I had a lot of fun. I proved the concept. It runs Unreal Engine decently. It games. You can upgrade it over time. What, you know, what more do you need? Come on. We're gonna do a few more tests, a few more videos. We got some ideas for this thing before giving it away, but make sure to sign up for the newsletter in the link in the description so you get notified as soon as we open up the giveaway. And again, it's gonna be completely free to sign up. And uh, this budget beast is gonna go to one of you lucky subscribers. And if you wanna support this project, please check out the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Bodhi the Movie Maker. You get access to my horror novel, Northport 1999. And like the other me said, <coughs> he didn't say that, I said that. And like the other me said, you get a 15% off merch discount when you become a Patreon member. What he didn't say is that you get access to the entire first book. You get your name credited in the back of the book when it's published and you get access to the art and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, including the private community. You also get shout outs at the end of our videos like this. So check it out. Okay. Love ya. Bye.